So hello everyone, thanks very much for joining us. I'm Ellis Ellis from VisionAid and today we're going to be presenting the new standalone reading devices, the ReadEasy Evolve Eco and the ReadEasy Evolve Max. Now, these are our seventh generation standalone reading systems. Um, VisionAid International has been uh, making reading systems since 2006 um, when we first started um, doing in those days they were flatbed scanner systems. Um, I'm just going to pin my video as well, just in case, and spotlight in case it's not doing it. Sometimes it does. It's difficult for me to tell on there. So, um, and yeah, we're, we're really proud to have got to the seventh generation sort of iterations of our, of our solutions now. They're really nice and easy to use, fast and accurate. And I'm just going to go take you through the, the systems um, sort of from the beginning. I can't go into full detail on them, but I'll get as much as I can in an hour. Um, but please do ask questions. I think Kate's just saying in the chat, please feel free to do that or also unmute your microphone if you want to say hello um, and do it as well. It doesn't bother me. I'm kind of used to doing Zoom presentations now for the last couple of years, as everyone is. Sorry, we can't see you in person as well. Hopefully next year we'll be able to. Um, so I will, I will get started. What I'm going to show you, first of all, if I just switch my camera, hopefully it'll allow me to do it okay. We've got here the ReadEasy Evolve Max, and then behind that is the ReadEasy Evolve Eco. Um, but I was just going to show sort of the form factor because they, as you can, if you can see, that they're, they're pretty much identical. In fact, the, the button layouts, the actual chassis of the unit is the same, and it's exactly the same as the previous generation ReadEasy Evolve as well. So that's that's worked really nicely. Um, so we've just kept that form factor, changed some of the software, and on the Eco, the hardware is different as well, um, and then just sort of gone from there. So the main unit has six tactile buttons along the top edge of it and they are if i hold up the camera hopefully it's sort of see they are all very tactile and even the markings on the buttons are tactile as well so it's really easy to feel even if you found the button you can feel the different shapes that are on them so the faster and slower buttons have up and down arrows or chevrons on them the faster has three up and it's con convex and then the slower one is concave and has a single down arrow on it the left and right buttons which are forwards and backwards a sentence um, have left and right arrows on them. And then the play pause button has a nice pip in the middle of it in the center. And the button on the far right is the capture. And that has a rectangular bar, um, which is very proud on it as well, which is really easy to, to feel. It's got a nice handy carry handle as well, which just lifts up from underneath. So it's easy to grab the unit and move it around. And then the important button, the on-off button, on-off button is in the back right-hand corner on there. Then just come around to the side really big chunky volume slider this has actually been upgraded from units from a few uh, months ago so it's got a really nice sort of tactile resistance on it uh, and the buttons actually have been upgraded since the first version of the evolve unit as well so they are even more tactile now than they were on the previous generation ones just from feedback from users and our own findings um, and then also on the left hand edge we've got a headphone jack so the evolve and the evolve eco so the evolve max and the evolve eco all come with headphones um, so you can just plug those in and then it mutes the speakers if you need to listen privately to, to information. Uh, and also on this right hand edge is a positioning flap or positioning guide. So this allows totally blind users to be able to align their documents in an A3 for, for A3 um, purely by touch. Um, because this camera does both, uh, the, these units do both, uh, well, so the Max does A4 and A3 capture, having that um, can help you to um, reposition. Uh, position the document. That's there. And if we move around the back, we then have ports along the, the edge here. And if I just show on here, these are also marked with pips. So we've got two USB ports on the Max uh, for connecting a touch screen, which I'll cover later on, and, a, and memory sticks for upgrading, or potentially a different pointing device. So if you've got a low vision user wanting to use this device, it's really, really powerful as a magnifying and reading device for, for users with some sight, as well as just pure text-to-speech for users with no vision. Um, so they're really nicely tactile marked, a single pip for the USB port one, and there's a double pip really proud on the USB two. And then we've got a Roman numeral I and an II, one and two for the HDMI. And the Evolve Max, the only system I think at the moment that has a display port output as well. So if you've got a really modern display and want to connect it in, display port works on that too. Um, the camera is then very neatly stored in the bottom on here. So you, there's a thumb hole there, and then that allows you to just lift the camera out nice and easily. It only goes in one way around on there, and it magnetizes in place. 
And then there is also the optional keypad on there, but I'm going to leave that docked in there at the moment because we'll cover that a bit later on once we connect it um, into a screen and go into some of the more advanced features on there as well. But I'll take the camera out on here, so it just slides out. And then on the top of the unit, the Evolve Max, one of the key differences is it now it only has an A3 or just one camera port on it. So camera unfolds on here nice and easily. There are integrated LED lighting on here, but this is designed to be as, um, well, the camera is designed for to work in normal ambient lighting. So lights on cameras like this, because you haven't got a wide field of view coming from the, from the lights can cause reflections on, on a lot of reading devices. So we've actually optimized this to work as long as you've got normal ambient light, you don't need the lights on in here. So you shouldn't get um, as many issues with reflections. Um, but I've set it up here to sort of show reflections are the number one problem for text-to-speech devices. It doesn't matter what type of device it is. It might be an all-cam, a standalone reading machine like this, anything that captures text. If you've got something glossy and light reflecting from above on a ceiling, it can cause real problems with it. So it's just something to be wary of, which we'll cover a bit later on as well. Um, but the camera just slots in on here nice and easily. Put in down there. And that's it set up and then i'll just slide this one to the back and i'll turn that one on later this is what we the first product we're going to show is the evolve eco so that's this device here and this is as i said exactly the same controls as before but the eco now has those cables on it's ready for me to plug in on the max a bit later um this is uses much less power because it, so it's using a different um computer technology inside it more akin to mobile phone technology, which enables it to be much more power efficient than other reading devices, uh, including the Max unit. It is a little bit slower, um, but for many users, it's still a, a quick reading machine. It's only because the Max is so fast that you can really see the difference on it. So let's have a look at something underneath it. So I've got a standard novel on here. Um, it has proper, really good quality page straightening on the device as well. So the pages don't have to be completely flat underneath the, the unit. Uh, and to align them, you've, this one doesn't do A3, so you just line it up to the unit and then align the right-hand page with the right-hand edge of the device. And if you've got a really thick book like this is, um, with the text going quite close to the top edge, the actual book title, it's probably advisable then just to move it a centimetre or so forward just to make sure that's not being chopped off on there. Then all we have to do is push the capture button on here. Capturing. I'll just turn the volume up. Hopefully, Kate, if that's not coming through clearly on there, you can let me know. Um, and it has motion detection. So if we are positioning the book, there is no rush to think, oh, I've got to get the book positioned down there before it takes the picture. We can take as long as we like um, to get our hands in the right position to then allow it to take the picture. And when you hold them still, it then takes the picture automatically. It will then recognize all of the text on both pages. Recognizing Kate Morton. There we are. Watch. Be a reminder of what heartbreak can do to the most sensitive so results. I confess that I had heard tell of his ruinous state, but I would not have believed the description had I not. I'll just pause it there. So it's done both the left and the right pages just in a few seconds there. So it's nice and quick. And I actually bent this page down so it still straightens the pages individually. I'll show that a little bit more for, for users with sight on when we connect it into the screen uh, a little bit later on as well. So once we've captured the book, what can we do with it? Very, very straightforward. Play pause button on the top of the unit. So just move this a bit closer on here. So that will start and stop. You've got forwards and backwards a sentence with the right and left buttons on here. And the nice thing about the ReadEasy systems are that they're very, very responsive. So I have, as I soon as you press it, not. and as quickly as you press it, it will update the position that you're in in the document. But it's really nice if you're reading letters or things and it reads your address and information that you just need to skip over. It's the same with, with users with screen readers um, on computers. Responsiveness is really, it's nice to have a device that's really, really nice and responsive. Um, and these devices really are. Um, so it's, it's very nice from that perspective. People aren't pushing buttons and then wondering what's happening. The, the response is always instant on here. The same with the left and right buttons on here. The, also the up and down arrows on the left-hand side for faster and slower. So faster, as soon faster, as you press it, slower, slower, it tells you and actually slows the voice down slower, on there. Slower, slower, slower. So you can get a bit of an idea of what faster, it sounds like. Faster, faster. And then it, that even works while you're pressing, actually reading the document as well. So we can start it reading. I did not press him on the quick faster, faster question of and it will carry on. Kept, and he gave me no up or slower, slower, slower. Answer when I asked as to when he might return. And there are 40 different speeds on the Evolve Eco and the Mac. So you can really fine tune the speed to exactly what you want 
Um, obviously, as people get used to synthesized voices, computer generated voices, if they've never heard them before, then having the ability to um, get this, that speed correct, as well as finding a voice that they like is really, really important. So both the ReadyZ of our Eco and the Max support well over 30 languages. Um, the Max has, has got a slightly addition, extra support for some uh, Asian languages as well, which we'll run through when we, when we show that device. Um, some of those will be coming to the Eco as well. This isn't actually available yet, but it will be in about two to three months time, um, just so, so people are aware as well. Um, the only other navigation control we've got uh, that we can do on here, we can push and hold the buttons on here and it will then read word by word and spell the word to us. So I can push and hold. Return, he, only, O, And then when I release it, y. it spells it out. So a really nice way of doing that. Sorry, there is one more. You can push and hold the play pause button and go forwards and backwards to jump a paragraph at a time as well. Um, I won't show that, it just, it just does it. So it's really nice and simple to, to navigate around the, the unit. And that's it. Effectively, it's a really simple device in terms of the controls of, of how to use people of all ages are then obviously able to use it. We've got users over 100 years old using the device. Um, we always obviously show the, the device and, and just get them used to how to line the documents up and, and position them. But it's so simple. And with the, the feedback that it gives, um, it's really, really quick for people to pick up um, and start using. So that's the standard features of the device. Then the only slightly more advanced things you can do with it are what are called language, um, well, recognition profiles for reading different languages. So it can automatically detect the languages of the pages, which I'm going to show on the Evolve uh, Max later on. And that feature is exactly the same on this. But for certain languages, like uh, Asian languages, like Chinese and Korean, they can't be automatically detected. <clears throat> so you may have to put those on, <clears throat> excuse me, to what's called a recognition profile, which you can then very easily change between just with the play pause button and faster and slower. Recognition profile three activated. So you may, for example, on three have um, Chinese or Korean, and then on recognition profile one, maybe German, French, and English, and recognition profile two might be um, Spanish and Portuguese, for example. Um, you can have multiple languages available on each recognition profile, but really the maximum you can have to maintain accuracy is, is about five. Once you go over that, it may start looking and, and check finding languages that um, it shouldn't do in certain places um, for obvious reasons on there. So I'll just set that Recognition back. profile two and recognition profile one activated. Back to one. So what I can then do is I'll just move the camera slightly, excuse me for this. Around the back, I'm just gonna connect in one. So it is connected already. If I um, what I'll do is actually show the keypad first before I do the screen. I'm getting, getting ahead of myself there. So on the back of the unit, magnetized is an optional feature pack. So what does this do? Effectively, it gives users. Uh, we sort of split it into two categories. So for users who have no usable vision or blind users who have no advantage of having any text magnified. Um, what that enables you to do is create multiple page documents very easily. So you can capture multiple documents and then have them stored on the device um, to read sort of um, from start to finish without interruption. And although it's very fast, if you're wanting to read a book or a, a longer document, those sort of on this device sort of five to 10 seconds of the processing time will really interrupt the flow of the reading. So with both these devices, you can capture pages. You can actually it's the only device, as far as I'm aware, that you can capture while it's reading. So you can capture the first page, have it reading out loud, and then you can capture pages in the background while it's reading to you as well. So for example, on this one, I could be have it reading by pressing play. And then instead of the capture button in the bottom right, I will press the append button just above it. So start it reading with play. Only looked at me and now if I press append. For the supper he did not eat and leaving. His wretched presence stayed with me and afterwards. I don't know if you and can hear. Me even now, as I sit by the dying fire writing this record, the general extract painted a melody. Just pause it now. It, may, it gives you a little audio, audible sort of bong, bong noises to give you feedback because it doesn't want to tell you capturing page two and recognizing and recognition complete because that would interrupt the, the flow of the reading. So when it's not reading, it will just give you those. Uh, audible noises and that bong that happened there would let, let me know that it had recognized it, it captured the page so now when i'm reading 
um, the keypad will also enable you to navigate through pages by pushing and holding the dedicated paragraph button. So if I push and hold the outer navigation button on here, on the, it's two to the right of the play pause button. Page two. It then says page two, two of two, and then we can start 66. it reading. And that's Kate now reading the page I've just captured on here. Found its way into Radcliffe's satchel. So for power users who really love reading, this means that the only time they're waiting is actually to capture the first page and then they can just capture and queue up as many pages they want in the background without having to to wait uh, or be have a pause in between the capturing of each page so a really nice feature uh, on that um, what else has it got it has a really nice dial on here which is like a, a fast forward and rewind uh, dial like you used to have on a tape player but instead of um it just going at a set speed it has what's clicks and Place every time you click it round, it does a word at a time. So you can very quickly supposed skip forwards order. and backwards or through your document. It's, it's especially useful if you've got numbers that you need to read out loud, or if there are, there are um, something you've just sort of missed and you need to go back a few words. You can, of course, jump back a sentence at a time, but it's really nice if you're only a couple of words past it, just to jump Backs back place, to then listen to the word it was that you missed. And then you can just start it reading again with the play pause button. So really simple uh, and sort of intuitive control on there. Then what else have we got? Cancel button in the bottom left. So that obviously if you're capturing something, you can actually interrupt it and stop it capturing just by using the, the uh, cancel button on there. Um, and then we've also, it also takes you out of the menus. The top left button in the uh, triangular shaped button, which enables you to, it which effectively puts the device into help mode. So we can push this button and then we can listen to it. Help. Press a button to hear its function. Press the same button again to exit help and perform its function. There we are, so really simple. It's now that now we're in key describer mode, so we can push any button on the keypad and it will tell us what it does. So if I push the play pause button. Play pause button. Press to play or pause the reading of your document. Press together with faster or slower buttons to change recognition profile. There we are, so it gives you a full description of what that does and you can do that on every button. And then once you've found the button you want, you just push that same button again, it will exit help and then do what that button's supposed to do. So if I push play again, it will exit help and start reading again. Document mode. The placement accidental or was there some meaning to it? it there we go. So really, really simple. And then the other button on here on the left with a, an orange rectangular button with three uh, tactile lines across it is the, the menu icon is, is for the menu. And we can prick, quick press it document management and it takes a save document with voice tag into document management where you can then store documents in the machine's memory so that's one of the extra features you need the, the keypad for all the devices have a built-in microphone behind them so you don't need to plug in any extra device to be able to record a voice um, saving of, of your document but it will also automatically name the document based on what it thinks might be the heading from the first page as well. So you can store, save documents on there, you can load them, and you can also import and export in lots of different formats on a USB memory stick. Evolve Max does have slightly more formats that it supports on that at the moment, um, but all the main ones are there on the, on the Eco. Um, so it's, and not, so it's only really a, a very small subset of users that tend to actually use the import and export feature on it, but for the users that need it, it's quite, it can be quite important. Um, if we cancel out of the menu, the document management on there, document mode. and then push and hold the menu button, main menu. it takes us into document the main menu. Management. So I'm not gonna go through every option on here at the moment. I'll, I'll cover and touch on them a bit more when we go into the Evolve Max um, as well, um, because the, the features are effectively the same on both. Um, but it allows you, when you have the screen connected, to do more advanced things. Like, in fact, I can connect, turn the screen on here now. So these are all the options on here in a really simply laid out menu, which when you have the control pad, if you, uh, what I, so, so that effectively ends the, uh, the, the no vision kind of controls from it. Um, so we can remove the magnetic simplifier that's on the keypad on here. So, and then it reveals a few additional controls, most of which are yellow in color. And the yellow signifies that they are visual based controls. There is one extra button on here, which is the bookmark button. So I'll just, Document. touch on that first so what that will enable you to do if you are studying something if i just magnify this up on screen on here and there was a particular point in a book that you had to refer back to um, or if you're a student and you're studying something and you know you've got to refer back to it again later 
and you've got a hundred page document that's that's open you can add a bookmark to it just simply by pushing the bookmark button bookmark added it then adds the bookmark and then if we push and hold the bookmark button bookmarks it, there are three bookmarks in this document it gives us a first page it gives us a full list of the bookmarks and it will automatically create a first and a last page uh, bookmark for you if you've got a multiple page document and then you can add as many bookmarks in as you want and very easily navigate to them um, and it will jump you straight to that position within the document so a really nice feature for users that need to refer back to things again later on in the same document um, if you're reading the document and you save it it does actually save the position that you're in in the document so if you're just wanting to read something like a book then you want to read it start to finish and you've captured the whole book there's no need to add a bookmark in for that because when you turn the device off, it remembers exactly where you got up to as long as you've saved the document on the machine. And then when you turn it back on again and load that document, it'll just resume from the same sentence that you left off at. So really nice and friendly from that perspective as well. Just come back out of there. Um, I'm not gonna to touch on, on those at the moment. I'll just go into the menu. Main menu, document management. So we've got document management, page management as well. So that enables you to reorder pages, re-recognize pages, move pages sorry that's the same as reordering you can delete pages um, so if you've got a really long document like a book and you've captured and you've missed a page out or you captured it while it was um, a, a page was folded over or something and you need to recapture it it means you don't have to recapture the whole thing again you can just capture that one page and put it in the right place within your document um, and i'm just trying to think what else we've got on there that's the main bits on that um, I'm not going to cover every setting on here because it is really customizable, but we'll go into some of the low vision bits now on this actually. So if I come back out of here, document mode. So you can see on the screen on here, this is now displaying the text of this to us on the, the, the large monitor that we've got connected into it. Um, so it works with any HDMI screen on the VDD Evolve Eco. Um, and it will just so television screens or monitors, you just plug it in and it will just work. And it gives us an accurate magnification guide from there. All I'm doing here is rotating the zoom dial and you get really smooth zooming. So for users with RP or tunnel vision who may actually want small text, you can make it smaller than one times on there. And then it will zoom all the way up, well, to, to really as large as you would ever want to go on the systems on here. And the text stays perfectly sharp because it's overlaid text. Um, there is no sort of breakup of the image. If I go back to image view, I just cycle around quickly on here. The original image is still very, very good on this because it's a 13 megapixel camera, but it, it probably doesn't come across very well on Zoom, but you, it is starting to break up on there, although it's a, a simple sort of normal novel type book. It's not a tiny font document, which we'll look at later as well. But if I go into overlay view, you can then see it replaces it with a really nice, clear, redrawn font at your chosen color. You can change the highlighting mode on it. You can change the cursor size and color as well. Um, so it's really customizable to how you prefer to, to be able to see something. This overlay view is really useful if you've got pictures and graphics. So on a, on a textbook like that, sorry, just a pure textbook like this, it's not so useful, but on something with diagrams or tabular information, um, that's when the overlay view is really useful because the original image of the document stays as the original picture. So the border of the page there is still the original color of the, the book that we can see. So the next viewing mode, because there are six of them, I'll just go through them quickly. This is now reformatted mode, so column view. And again, we can word wrap it as we zoom in. And then as you, we can continuously start it scrolling. So this is a really nice feature on this, like the old my reader um, from Humanware systems used to have, and some of the modern text-to-speech systems have. This is all hardware accelerated, so it's perfectly smooth, 60 frames per second scrolling uh, on this. Um, because you can make it go much faster if you want to on there as well. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how well that comes across on, on Zoom with the limited frame rate that it offers. To stop it scrolling, you just click, and then we can switch to another mode, which will be horizontal view. So exactly the same, but scrolls left to right, like a ticker tape. This can be really good for users with um, conditions like nystagmus, where their eyes may, it may be it's difficult for them to focus on a particular word or certainly on a, on a line of words as they're reading across. So by just having one line to focus on, that can really help their reading speed and make it more comfortable to read with. Um, and then we've got, Vertical as well. So we found that this can be useful also for nystagmus, but also for users with retinitis pigmentosa. Sometimes users um, may find it easier to be able to read vertically than they would left to right. Uh, so you can't test that on things normally because everything printed is pretty much printed left to right. 
um, for, for actual text. So it's a really nice mode from there. And then the final mode, number six, is one word at a time. Um, so for a user wanting larger text. Now by pushing and holding the, the button on there, it actually gives you the position on the page where that document is, so where that word is. So if the word hasn't been recognized correctly, you can find out where in the page it is by pushing and holding the button and it will then zoom to it. So you can see whereabouts um, it actually occurs on the page. It's a nice feature for when OCR doesn't work and I'm sure any, anybody who's used OCR before, it, it's not infallible and it does make mistakes and it's invariably on a really important word that you're wanting to, to read that, that, that um, you need to understand. So for low vision users, that can really help you be able to see it. The nice thing is obviously how accurate these are um, the Evolve Eco is actually as accurate as the, the Evolve Max, uh, sorry, the previous Evolve was with um, our sort of flagship product. Uh, and then going on to the Evolve Max, it's even more accurate uh, and does larger format documents as well. Um, that's the visualization side, and that's the same between all the products. Um, I'm probably going to connect into the Evolve now, just to so the Evolve Max, sorry, just to show um, some of the other differences in the larger format capture as well. So I'll pop this one down, store that in the back. Slide it away over there. And I'm just going to plug the cables in on, on here. Just bear with me a second. I'll try not to pull the tripod over with the other cable. So I'm plugging in a USB cable for a touch screen. Then I've got a display port for the monitor and then the power adapter as well. So three cables. Most users, if you don't have a screen, you'd just be plugging in the power adapter. But uh, And then if you've got a screen, it would be the power adapter and an HDMI or display port. But because I've got a touch screen on here, I've got an extra cable to plug in because then you can use it like a giant tablet screen as well. So I'll just switch it on on here. And the keypad's magnetized to the back. It gives you an audible beep a couple of seconds after it's starting. Uh, and then it takes just about 20 seconds to actually boot up. So it's a very quick starting device. You're not sort of waiting around for a minute for it to start up. And it will tell us when it's ready. We is ready. There we are. So it's ready to go. Um, with this view as well, you can also get a live view from it. So we can still, if I have the keypad, if I move the Evolve Eco, excuse me, slide this in view a little bit more. So hopefully you can see both the device and that now. So I've got the device underneath here. We can then, I take the simplifier off. Oh, the keypad, you just push any button on the keypad and it will then connect it. Just takes a few wireless seconds. Wireless control pad connected. What I didn't mention is that keypad is completely wireless on there and it just takes two AAA batteries. So on the, the back on here, standard batteries which it comes with and the, the typical battery life is actually five years of normal use from the two batteries. So really, really long time. You're not going to be swapping batteries every three or six months with a device on there and it's got power saving modes. If you don't push a button for an hour, it turns off. So you can't flatten the batteries sort of by accident on it. Um, but just show the magnification power on this with the, the new 18 megapixel camera that we've got on here. And this is seeing the A3 area on here. So we can zoom right in and it's still staying really clear. It's still clear. It's just starting to break up a little bit now on here, but we can put it into two color mode. Oh, so you can rotate it. Yellow on black. I can put it into two color mode on here, and the quality is still really good considering how far zoomed in it is. Um, so, what that means is that it, it actually really helps the OCR as well, the, the character recognition, because the image quality is so sharp on the, on the unit. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate on here, I'll just pop it back into color. Black on your color. Um, one of the new features we've got in the software is the ability to crop around the page as well. So, if I press the capture button Capturing. on here and I hold this on here, because it's seeing such a large area, it's got part of my leg in it on the desk on here as well. So let's see what it does with this. It will- 66. I'll just pause it. The new feature crops as tightly to the document as it comfortably can, including getting rid of hands and things on there. So by us only allowing A3 on here, it's simple because the user doesn't have to change the camera between A3 and A4 like they did on the old Evolve, but it could cause problems if there's other things on the desk or, um, documents or things that are around the edges. As long as there's nothing close-ish to the, to the center document, it will just filter everything out all automatically. So it's a really nice new feature that we've added to it, which then actually speeds up the recognition and makes it more accurate as well. So it's done a really good job of straightening the pages on here. For low vision users, you can see the amount of straightening that it does. And I've just touched the screen inadvertently there, but that then shows it's a really nice, smooth 
touch screen like on an iPad and you can pinch to zoom as well. And then you can just press on a word. Likely that he had stored, even concealed, the photograph inside his document. And it will start reading. Just tap on the screen to pause it as well. We have added some extra gestures on this as well. These aren't finalized yet because this is a, a non-release version of the software, but you can change the viewing mode just by two finger swiping down. So you don't need to touch the keypad if you've got a touch screen. This Dell touch screen that we recommend on it is really nice actually because you can lower the screen down more like a, uh, a book that you'd be holding. So you can have it whatever height you want and just angle it down towards you and then use it like a giant tablet, but it's supported up at a nicer height for you to be able to get your head so you don't have to lean forward as much. So ergonomically, that's really good as well. So two fingers just goes through those scrolling modes, uh, viewing modes um, that we had on there. And you can go forwards or if you two finger up, it will take you backwards through them as well. Um, and then back to full color, a normal image. That's really nice. Um, forwards and backwards of page is two finger swipes and the beginning and the end of the document is three finger swipe left to right. So really, really simple. Um, controls on there for users that do have access to a touchscreen or, or want to use it like a giant touchscreen or a giant iPad as well. I'll just pop that back up again. Um, a woman to explain her set. To any problem when you're, when you're moving the screen, any tap on the screen will start it reading. Um, right. So that's the visualization side. I'm just going to show you the power that it's got with certain different types of documents. So save changes. Sorry, Would just you like the to button. save the changes to your document before capturing it's the other Evolve Eco? I was trying to move out the way a little bit. So what have we got that's tricky? So a really awkward receipt for the microphone I'm actually talking to you on now. Um, hopefully it doesn't go wrong. We need to send it back. So this is a really poor quality um, kind of, it's almost dot matrix style print on a, on a device. So if I pop that under there, again, you can put it anywhere under the capture area on here and it will recognize it. Um, you can align an A4 document up against the unit, and then the A3 one will go on to with a guide shortly. But I'll just do this. Push the capture button on the keypad. Capturing. Recognize. Scan. www.scan.co.uk. So I could stop there and say, oh, it's done an amazing job, but let's actually have a look at it. And the, the way we can do it on this is with the overlay view. So it's quicker for me to show on this with a touch screen. So I can two finger swipe. And that's, this is the text it's actually recognized. So there's me, there's our address, line number. And I can switch back by pushing and holding the button. So the text quality on here is terrible, but the accuracy of it, even on words that don't have fully formed characters is, is really good. Um, it's struggled on this word on here, serialized is the word on there, but it, half the top of it is sort of chopped off. So again, it's that's just explaining that no OCR is perfect. A human can read that because they can make out the rest of the letters automatically. Fortunately, this can't, but it is really, really accurate. Um, it's even got the, the little notes down the side there. So the text is really small and poor quality, and yet it does a really, really good job with it um, on there. So that's that one. And let's do something um, a bit different. So a larger format document. So one of the key things on the Evolve Max is that it, and the same with the Evolve, before it, it could do A3 size pages or newspaper size pages. You can do a whole tabloid size page in one go. Other systems are just limited to A4, which is fine when you've got an article just like this on this area, but then you'd struggle to be able to get the one underneath it because it goes across all the columns. Or if you've got an article that does read across all the columns, it just wouldn't fit under there and you'd have to try and split it up. But if you can't see to split it up or fold the page, then it gets very difficult. So this is nice on this one, just being able to put the whole device, the whole document down. We can then take the positioning guide out from the side and that will give us the position to line it up to on the right hand edge and then we just capture again with the capture button capture. here and you can see actually on the screen it captures quite a much larger area than that um, so you, you don't sort of have to worry too much it's not like you don't position it perfectly it's going to chop it off it's got spare space Record around passing. it so that you don't have to worry about six it. sport tennis so there we are i've just paused it so on here it does a really good job that's tiny number six on there. It's difficult to get my webcam to autofocus on that, unfortunately. We've also got sport and tennis, and that's sort of a cyan colored tennis on a cyan colored background, and yet it still recognized it on there. So nice and accurate. If I zoom out to give a bit of an overview of the page, it's got the, the date of the newspaper as well, Saturday the 15th of January, the Times in the corner. It's recognized a GS on there. If I just zoom in and push and hold the button, we can have a look. Oh, it is one GS is actually written there. It's got comma GS, but that's, that's 
not, not a bad job. It's a random sort of characters that are just printed on the newspaper. I'm not sure what for. Um, obviously, it's got all the, the big headline print. And then coming down to the main document, you can see it's recognized all the columns correctly. So the column recognition is really good on here. Um, drop caps, it has a good go at as well. So it doesn't display them perfectly. It's a really difficult thing to do, but it will have a go at them. So this one down here, if I zoom in on this area here, I push and hold the overlay button on here. You can see it's got a giant I and then an N, and it's recognized it as in Fleet Street. So if we read it from here with the cursor, you can either tap with the touchscreen or position the cursor with the joystick and then just click it down. It'll read from the word closest to the cursor. In Fleet Street times, oh, it used to be called the pub test. So really, really good. It's one of the the actual accuracy gains we've made from the Evolve to the Evolve Max really helped with the newspapers as well, um, partly thanks to the camera. Um, but it's now a, a really viable solution. Uh, really, really good if you've got a user who doesn't want to get their newspaper in digital format or audio format through a smart speaker. Um, the ability to actually get it from a proper newspaper page and sit down with a cup of tea or coffee and read it is uh, what a lot of our users really like from these type of devices. That's newspapers. Um, let's do some multiple language tests as well. So I've got here a document with French, um, sorry, English, French, and German on. So I'm on, I think, just the English profile at the moment. I'm going to set it to recognition profile two. Recognition profile three, act recognition profile two activated. So that has my English, French, and German on. So now I just position this document under here. You can actually just position an A4 document just like this under it. You, do, you don't have to turn these landscape because it sees the, the width. So it's easier just to keep it straight. Capturing. And then capture very very fast again cropping the document out automatically multi-language test document so it's reading in english on this bit and i'll just show as we come down to here go into french french le défenseur des droits s'interroge sur l'accessibilité aux cantines scolaires so automatically change to french and then we've got some german down the bottom on here größer heller breiter sie wollen wachstum dann kaufen so a really useful feature for users that do want to read in multiple languages um, it's not so much of a feature in the UK. We're terrible at reading and <laughs> learning multiple languages. Not the case for the rest of Europe. You're much better at it than we are. So um, it's a really nice feature for that. Um, it's not infallible. So if there are words that could be available in both languages, it might make a mistake on a sentence by sentence basis, but it, it works in the vast majority of cases really nicely. It means once you've got it set up like that, you don't actually have to change settings. You can just leave that for the user. And if they've got a German document or an English document or a French document or one with multiple languages, once it's set, it will just um, do that for them. Um, yeah, and that's it's straightforward to do that in the recognition profile, but it's a bit more of an advanced feature that we wouldn't necessarily expect sort of a 95 year old to do themselves because menus and things of any type are tricky with that. But um, once it's done, it remembers it and you never have to touch it again. So it's, it's once it's done, it's really, really good for them. That's multi-languages. I've got about 20 minutes left. Um, just quickly show Korean as well that we've got on here. So we've got, um, this one won't automatically change. So I do need to change this to um, recognition profile three, which is set for Korean. So this is Harry Potter. <laughs> Actually, oh, thankfully it says it's the Goblet of Fire one. I was gonna say, I couldn't actually see what it was because I can't read Korean, unfortunately. Um, but place it down underneath. I'll just change to recognition profile three. Recognition profile one, act recognition profile three activated. Yeah, let's come backwards through it. Press the capture button again. Capturing. This has got very thin pages on this book as well. And some of the text is coming through, which can sometimes confuse devices. It normally e. will work okay e. on this. Pretty put uh -huh. Typically on this, not quite so well. I'll, I'll recapture. It's got some of it on there. Capturing. Let's just try again. This one on Korean, the automatic page straightening isn't quite as good because it doesn't have the sort of full 360 degree sort of support that it has on Western languages. There we are. So the page does have to be a little bit straighter um, before it'll do it. It does de-skew um, vertically, but the rotation part doesn't work so well. So that's what it did on there. Um, I'm not sure if anybody listening actually uh, reads Korean, um, but we have it on good authority that is now nice and accurate. I, the way to sh show it visually, is to zoom in and then I can push and hold to show the original picture of the, the uh, Korean writing. And then the overlay will show you the, the text that's been recognized on there as well. So we can look to several of them and they look to be identical on there, which therefore means it's obviously going to be reading it correctly uh, as well. So just to show that different languages are supported and we do have Arabic and, and Japanese are, are not far away on it, thanks to the, the high resolution camera that we're using uh, on it. So, so what about, we've done, wide objects but what about really thick ones so if i jump Light back mode. on here now the 
really easy Evolve Max has one of the biggest depths of fields of any camera. So I've got a packet of paracetamol here, a good so a few centimeters here, and I've got the biggest book that we could find from multiple homes, which is an Encyclopedia Britannica down here. It's difficult to sort of convey scale on, on this, but it's really, really thick. I don't know how many pages, it, it's 2,100-ish pages thick, um, and it, it's really, really tall. So it's a, it's a big book as well. Um, if you just want to do one page on here, the easiest thing and what we do with other users, if they want to do something, you can um, just sort of blank the page off with a white sheet. But if you want to be reading, because you may not know which side of the page the thing that you want to look up is on, but this is more just for an example of what it can actually do in terms of capturing. So I'll position it, push the capture. Oh, I need to put it back to English. Recognition profile one activated. Yeah. Now, if you just, if I move my hand underneath just to show, so even with the page, I'll leave it bent flat on here. So it's a huge difference in terms of the focus from there to here. We'll let it capture. It'll take a few seconds. There's a lot of text on this page. So it takes a little bit longer to, to recognize. Recognizing 61%. Gives you the progress if it actually needs to. It normally doesn't, but because there's to so much text on I, Abby, Giuseppe, the... Yeah, now this is also just to show where it's tricky on here. So it's done all the text on there. If I zoom in, yeah, on here. So what was that abyss? Abby, that sounded a bit strange. So if we zoom in, have a look on there. So it is actually, it goes into sort of Latin writing. So um, abbas with a, a line across the top of it and then abby uh, in English after it. So that's it. with this, it's got Latin pronunciations of words, which obviously English voices on here will struggle with. Um, so that's the bit it, it may not do so well on. I zoom all the way out. I'm just going to change the color actually. White so change to have a, a darker background. Um, if I zoom all the way up, we can see both pages on here, and it's got all the columns correctly, done a really good job. Um, from what I can see, you can zoom right in on anywhere on here. And you can do it. With two. I've got, see, I keep forgetting I've got the touch screen. It's much quicker and easier to do it with that uh, for use on there. So really, really powerful. Um, there's not really any other system that can do that kind of area in, in one go, certainly not as accurately as that either. So pretty much anything you can throw at it, it will have a really, really good go at. How long have we got left? 15 minutes. So that, then we go on to table recognition. So tables for visually impaired users and blind users are, are always awkward because you want to navigate across rows and down rows and, and tables by their sort of very essence are visual because the headings of tables are across the top. And you instinctively know as a, with vision which column you're in because you've scanned it without even thinking about it to know whereabouts you are. So how do you get around that? as a blind user. Well, we've added special table detection mode recently on here. So again, if I just capture this page, Capturing. let it recognize it. Example bank statement. Just pause it and zoom out. So it's recognized the whole page on there. It's got all the, the textual information, but on here now, now what it does is if it sees a table, it will firstly visually display it as a table with the borders between the, the table cells. And sometimes if it sees something that it thinks is a heading in the table, it will pick that out automatically for you. And then when you navigate into it, it enables you to read around it more easily. So if I skip forwards, I'll just use the paragraph to skip down, or I could touch on it, but I'll, I'll navigate into the Mr. table. Jet statement. I'll let statement it read into date, it from here. The 9th of November, 2021, entering table, header detected, row two of 12, date the 10th of November, Description, starting balance, balance, 370 pounds and 20 pence. I'll just pause it there. So what it's done is detected there's a heading there. And then it auto, because it knows that's a heading, it reads out the heading and then the information underneath it. So for the first sort of time, you can actually understand a figure or a, a value in a, in a table cell related to its heading. So it just makes moving around and understanding a table much, much easier. And it's missed out money out and money in headings because there are no values in those cells underneath it in the heading. So it's just gone straight to balance. But as we come down to the next row. Row three of 12, date 13. And we can use the, this actually works without the feature pack as well. So it will still read tables fully and allow you to navigate them if you only have the basic unit without the feature pack and without a screen connected. <clears throat> it's just easier to sort of explain it 
a little bit um, with a screen on there. Um, so we can navigate cell by cell just with the left uh, forwards and backwards a sentence button. So every time I press forwards a sentence, which is also on, on here on the main unit, we can just description go to the next cell. Bill ref, money out. If there's multiple lines, pounds. if there are multiple lines in the cell, it will jump to the next line in the cell as well. Um, if you want to go down a row, you use the paragraph buttons, or which you can also do on the main unit by pushing play, pause, and forwards and backwards, which is just the paragraph. So I can push on here and you can go down. Row four of 12, money out, 94 pounds. And it tells you the header you're in uh, and the row as well as you do it. So just a really, really nice way to navigate a table. Uh, these features are coming to read it software as well, which we did the presentation this morning on, um, but read easy has got them first. Um, they'll be coming in the, uh, later on this year uh, into read it as well. So the, they're pretty much the same in terms of the features, but this has actually got, it's a head on, on table recognition and detection versus the read it at the moment. Um, so that's bank statements on there. Colored backgrounds on things as well. It's one of the last ones to look at. So again, they're not infallible. So I've got lights reflecting above on here. Um, so we've got colored text and even blue, blue text on a blue background on the document on here, but we can pop it underneath, press capture. Capturing. Ah, this is good to show as well. Um, I'll just cancel it, capture in a second. Cancel. So directly no above document. me, I'll try and do it a bit slowly. I've got fluorescent, well, not directly above, but very close, unfortunately, is fluorescent tube lighting, which is then causing reflections down on here. If I put it back into the live mode. So this is really important on uh, text to speech devices. Down the bottom edge on here, there is a reflection coming from that light directly behind me. On, on there. So it's not really covering much text, but if I move this page further to the bottom, it then starts covering up the text on here. That's obviously, it's outside of the proper capture area, but just to highlight how important with any text-to-speech reading device, if you capture something and it's not reading correctly, try making sure that you you're not positioned underneath a light, or if you can move the position of the device to try it somewhere else, or turn the light off if there's enough ambient light in the room for it. Um, but I can't stress that that's <clears throat> the number one issue that people run into with any text-to-speech device is just reflections from external light sources. We know that from supplying devices like Allcam in the UK, which we do, <clears throat> and any reading device, basically. So just a little tip on there. So our position is that it's got to be a reflection, but it's not too bad on there. So I'll push capture. Capturing. Sage and onion. Stuffing me. So it's done done a good job on here. There's some little bits it's making some mistakes on just to, to show what it, the devices can and can't do. It's gone into a handwritten style font in and amongst the description. This is a Paxo stuffing, uh, stuffing balls uh, recipe. Um, and where you've got handwritten style text, that's where kind of any devices really unfortunately go to struggle. Struggle. It has a go there with the word pork on there, but then other ones it's, it's struggling with. Um, but if we come down to the difficult colored text, it's done a good job on here. It's not got it perfectly. So nutrition has just missed it. It's actually sort of tried to optimize the colors as much as it can on here. Um, and then done a good job at recognizing even the colored text on the colored backgrounds. So again, as I said before, very accurate, not completely un infallible, but they, they do make mistakes. Um, but this is certainly the most accurate reading device we've ever, ever done. Um, and it's it's nice that it's just we've been able to make these improvements both through the software and then the improved camera technology that that we're using in there as well. Um, in ten minutes, I'm trying to think what else is left. Uh, done magazines, newspapers, multiple languages. Oh, there's one other thing that we added, um, which is nice for for users. Um, who may have mobility issues in terms of actually being able to capture documents with things like that. Um, we've had that with people who've suffered from strokes um, <clears throat> or may have deteriorative sort of movement uh, and motor neuron conditions. Um, if we, I'll just jump this back to a, a different uh, page. I'll have to uh, just capture a book actually, just so it's uh, more straightforward on, on there to show what I mean. So I'll very quickly just capture a page on here. Actually. And I'll force capture it because you can. You don't have to wait for the detection. I'm going to add a page to it as Adding well. Page two, 
page two. So this is how quickly you can capture documents just by positioning and, and pushing the append on. Ah, it started reading, so it's now appending it. and scowls and numbers out of bed. I'll do some extra ones on here. The open window as if to pump. Let's pause it. Adding page four. One empty pages skipped. Page Sorry, four. Because it was recognizing on their phone. One hundred and. So if I go back to the beginning of the document just by pushing and holding on here. Page three, page two, one of four. So now we may be in a reformatted mode. And in fact, I'm just going to skip towards the end to highlight it. So quickly jump on here. And so a text. On a reformatted mode. Document management. Document mode. One second. There we are. The user may be wanting to read just by scrolling. Obviously, if it's, if it's speaking to them, it will read it out loud um, and then navigate to the next page. But we've added the feature in so that if you're scrolling visually, so if you've got a user that doesn't have a visual impairment, but they just need the text to be presented to them in a way that they can read it themselves. Uh, once it gets to the end of the page, <clears throat> scrolling to page two, okay. It will do this page automatically. Two. And then it will wait a second and then carry on scrolling at the same speed that we had it set before. So this means that users that can't actually interact with the device could have documents set up for them to read um, sort of nonstop, either, either with the scrolling or with the speech. So it's just a nice feature on there to highlight. Um, one of the more advanced features we've added as well is that many users will want the extra functionality of the feature pack, but if they're using that in an, in an educational or certainly in a business environment, they may not be allowed for um, sort of customer safety reasons to be able to store documents in the machine's memory. So for that reason, we've also enabled the ability to disable that, um, which only um, the distributor of the product has access to be able to do. So customers sadly don't have the ability to go in there and turn that feature on and off, but it can be permanently disabled by a distributor so that then documents, all the other features are there, you just can't save or export or import documents on the device um, just to make it uh, for GDPR reasons mainly. Uh, and any other sort of high security based documents or, or um, sensitive information that people may be looking at um, on there. So it's a nice feature that's been added on there. Um, just thinking if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Um, Kate, can you think of anything I've missed? If you're still awake, hopefully somebody's still awake there. <laughs> No, there's nothing you've missed at all, Al. Um, there were some questions in the chat, but I think you've even answered all of those. Oh, OK. So I didn't have a chance to look at those. It's no, no, that's OK. Cool. Um, one um, of them was about um, images that you've got within text. Um, ah, yeah. So yeah, I was just explaining that it doesn't read what they are, um, but you, you can then zoom in on them separately. That's right. We don't. Um, there are some really exciting developments that we're working on. on um, text-to-speech capabilities where you may even that problem might not be there for very much longer um, so even images of pictures might be able to be given a description of what the picture actually is of for a blind user so sort of watch this space and please just keep in contact and keep looking at our website and our social media because we may be announcing something about that in the next few months we hope um, the other thing i didn't mention actually on the evolve uh, eco is that it will be um, being provided with an optional battery pack um, we've wanted a, a battery version of a, an evolve for a long time um, we've now got one with that which we're, which we're really happy with so it enables you to find out how much charge is left in the battery how long it will take to charge what um, how many hours of runtime you've got left with it um, and it's going to be at least five hours of battery life from a single charge on it from what we've seen so far um, it only adds about 250 grams to the weight as well. The Evolve Eco weighs about 1.66 kilograms, and it's just over 1.9, I think, when or 1.9-ish when the um, the battery is included on it. Um, so then you can it'll be fully mobile to move around um, with you as well. Um, I don't think if there's anything else to to mention on there that I may have missed. But I think that's it. Um, does anyone have any have other questions? More, yeah, one oh, yeah. more question has just come through. Um, I haven't even read it yet, so I'll read it out loud to you, Alice. It says, will it also be able to read mixed language text, for example, English and German, or have to switch modes constantly? No, not at all. So, different. yeah, I should have probably set my device up to have uh, English, French and German and Spanish on it as default. So once you set that up on there, I have that set as recognition profile two on here. You don't have to change the setting at all. It remembers that when the machine starts up and then you just press capture and it will be looking for all of those four languages 
in every document. Now, there are actually two ways of doing that. You can tell ReadEasy that there is only going to be one language per page. So if you've got a user that just reads a German newspaper, but then they might also get correspondence in English or, or another publication that's just in English, you can have it set so that it will only look for either German or English on every page you capture. Or the other way, which is what you need if, you, if you've got a multiple language document, so if you've got English and German on the same page, then you set it to multiple languages per page, and then it will automatically switch language on a sentence by sentence basis. Um, and once that's set, you never have to change it. Um, so it's, it's really straightforward once, once you've set that in the recognition profile on it, um, just in the menu. Yeah, thank you for that question. So I didn't, I didn't make that very clear when I did that. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I hope it was informative and a bit useful for you and not too boring. Thank you very much for, for joining us. And um, yes, goodbye. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>